Okay, we're good. Okay. Good? Start. Yeah. It can be too low. So, a couple of weeks ago, John uploaded a very flattering video to Facebook showing off his uh, wonderful hairline, uh, asking for your questions for us to answer, just so you get to know a bit more about us. And the show. And the show. Our first question is from Fulton, who wants to know, what is your favourite thing to shoot? I imagine you both have different favourite subjects. Camera emoji. Very important. Yes. My favourite subject depends on my mood. So I prefer to do lots of different stuff. So if you have a look on my website, I literally have all range of photography. Uh, and some days I like to photograph a dog. Sometimes it'll be a person. You Sometimes always like to photograph dogs. I do like quite photographing yeah. dogs. But I think if I photograph just one thing, I'll get a bit bored. So it yeah. literally depends on my mood. Sometimes I fancy photographing a gnarly Cambodian worker. And then another day I prefer to be photographing a dog in the field. I would say... If I could be on a summit of a volcano or a mountain at sunrise, taking a landscape, that would be my number one situation. Life of Yavi, what are you guys all about? Oh, hmm. I like that. That's very Ooh. sort of generic, isn't it? What, should I we think, three words? Or I, just... think, I think what he's trying to say is, what is photo escapes? Okay. So, obviously we've just started photo escapes. It's basically a journey through our eyes of, of our photography trip, isn't it? So yeah. when we go on for our photography trips, whether it's for business or just for fun, we try and document the whole thing. I mean, um, it's, it's like half about travel, getting out there and, yeah. and having fun, photographing different places and seeing different things. And then half about, you know, we teach you how we yeah. see things, how we photograph things and some of the technical stuff as well. And also, Part of it is just that we actually both really love videography and it gives us a chance to do something a bit different, yeah. which is come up with these creative shots, fly the drone, and just gives us kind of yeah. another outlet. And rather than just taking the shots, let's create something out of the shots, yeah. which is a bit arty and yeah. fun. And The Lion Rock Press have asked, where's the best location you've ever photographed? Hmm. We haven't actually looked at these in advance, no, so we, we are haven't. thinking about it on the spot. Sigria Rock. Okay. In Sri Lanka, it's like, what is it? A volcanic plug that just yeah. is just rises up from the from the um, rainforest, and it just looks epic. I was there with you, and yep. if we'd had better light, that would have been yep. incredible. But we sat there for about three hours yep. and didn't get a good shot. It all just went dark, and then yep. we had to climb back down. Um, Next, my favourite spot. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so being very general, the most general location where I enjoyed was Myanmar, which was incredible i think you're going there possibly soon it yeah. is you will literally have the most incredible time well we the, might do a photo escape we there. may if i can find time we may do yeah. one but it is unbelievable the people are so friendly and helpful and actually a surprising number are able to speak some english and they just want to talk to you yeah, that's nice. so always makes it easier doesn't yeah it? and everything is really you know you go to some places and there's fishing things going on and then they've got a plastic red bucket and you're like yeah, yeah. you've ruined it but my, in my, Myanmar my... they have like this they'll have a wicker Old basket school, or yeah. a wooden something and it just makes it amazing to photograph yeah I'm going um, so going. I'm going to say Myanmar for that one right 45 minutes later <laughs> <laughs> so Team Yates HK where's a place you've been and photographed when you weren't as good where you'd love to go back now you are better she's assuming we're better now that is true I mean she likes our photos mm. That's hard. That is very hard. Um, Actually, I know. It's one specific image. And it was in Indonesia. Um, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> at Mount Bromo, which was erupting. And so when we arrived the night before, it was literally raining ash. The walk from our transport to our accommodation walked in and there was ash on our clothes and stuff. The next morning, climb up for sunrise, you get this view of Mount Bromo and it was erupting and that ash plume was going to one side and it was lit up by the red morning light. And I wish I'd known about long exposures at that point uh, because I just did like a static shot and yeah. it's fine. But I if I'd used a long mean. exposure, you'd have got this like amazing yeah. trail of, of, of it moving. Yeah. yeah, so that's that would be my, my one shot. I went to Kenya a few years ago um, and I wish I went there now with a massive lens that I, I would hire and take some shots of the animals. Because at the time, 
I wasn't very good. I didn't really know what I was doing. You got you got some nice photos while you there. I think I've seen yeah, some of them. But I wanted to. Uh, I wasn't that good, and lots of them had to be converted into black and white because because <laughs> you messed up. Do you reckon you have got the patience to be a full time professional camp for a week in a hide wildlife photographer? Oh well, no, I don't want to be in a profession where you actually have to piss yourself <laughs> yeah, in okay. your sleeping bag that's a fair point in order in order to get the shot to get the shot you want yeah, yeah okay that I'm, does make sense I, I don't i'm not do a big that. fan of pissing myself either no. i also am just not patient enough no i i because th just imagine how much anxiety goes through you when you're photographing yeah. a snow leopard imagine if you missed this moment when exactly because <laughs> you've gone for a piss i've actually read an article yeah. where someone went there and that's why he always wheezes in his, in his oh thing God. now because he can't afford to miss a shot. That. Couldn't yeah. handle that. Couldn't handle that. Nope. Next. Okay, so we're not going to be wildlife photographers. No. Nope. No. Okay. Angela Anderson photo. She'd like to know if we need an assistant. <laughs> Unfortunately, Angela, we have a very able assistant standing behind the camera right yeah. now, called Seal. Big up Seal. Big up Seal. <laughs> Sorry. Now we can't put it in. <laughs> why did I copy you as well? <laughs> It's fine. No, we're not putting big up seal in. No, we're literally no, not. No, we're not putting that yeah, in. Yeah. No, I, I'm not having that. The second part of her question, now we've recovered from that little outburst, uh, was what is your favourite wide angle lens for your beautiful landscape shots? It doesn't really matter about the lens, does it really? I mean, as long as you've got, because I use a 16 that's, to 35. That's a very unhelpful answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, I use a 16 to 35. Yeah. It's, is it my favourite lens? It's just a lens that does the but job. For landscape shots. But I use a 16 to 35 for a landscape. I'll use a 70 to 200 for a landscape. Okay. Good so point. actually, there are lots of different lenses. And I haven't really got a favourite. It's just whatever suits that location. Well, Angela, I'm actually going to answer your question of what's my favourite wide angle lens for landscape shots. And that is um, I've got an old Tokina 17 millimeter, which is tiny. It's from the 1970s. And it is, but <laughs> it works brilliantly. Uh, the 16 35 is great, but it's big and it's heavy. And when you've got a bag full of stuff that you're carrying, I like to try and keep it as light as possible within reason. So I use a 17 millimeter. And if I do need something a bit tighter, then I go to my 24 to 70. Next question. I'm gonna do that again. Next question. Have you ever missed a shot that you wish you'd captured? The one that got away? Uh, lots. Many, yeah. many, many, Every many time times. Every I go out with my camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The one that I got that I missed was uh, a photograph of some flamenco dancers in Spain. And I got this photo I was so happy with and it was like this parade. Yeah. And they were, they were walking in the streets and I did a slow shutter speed because I'd learned how to do it then. And their dresses were kind of twisting and then you had the cobbles that were sharp and it looked really good. And then before I knew what I'd done, I would pressed delete twice. I was literally looking at it and I went to zoom in. I was like, oh, this is brilliant. And I zoomed in, but I didn't zoom in. I just deleted it. You know, you can adjust that. You can adjust that. I, so when you press it twice, I it goes. Ruined my whole yeah. trip. Mine was probably similar to that, but I had actually taken a series of photos of an old man, an old calligrapher in Hong Kong. And he had like, it was like doing all the calligraphy, obviously. And then in the background was like old sort of newspapers all flaking off and a yeah. really cool background. Uh, and I had it for about a year, and then I did something with my hard drives. What, this is like one of my first year when I wasn't didn't really know about all this stuff. Yeah, and I remember this. I just don't know where it is. I, I also I also lost a lot of my barley shots. Have you got them on your website throw. still? I've still got them on my website. Yeah, yeah. you should have a look. Those are, those are some of my favourite photos oh, you've great. taken. Brilliant. Next question we have: What's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you whilst doing your photography? Uh, I've got I've got I've got a good story. Okay. Uh, in New Zealand, uh, a few years ago, I was photographing a seal. Um, and I thought, right, let's see how close I can get to this seal. So I went as close as I could, you know, I was going like this, coming up to the seal. I had it in my 7200 zoom lens. I must have been, I mean, it was pretty much as close as you could possibly get without the folk, uh, without the lens. Sounds very responsible. So I'll, I'll, Another reason why you shouldn't I'll, be a wildlife photographer. <laughs> 1.2 <laughs> metres away, that's how close it, it was okay. focusing. Yeah. I was looking through my lens at this seal and I was getting some really good shots and I was like, oh, I'm really happy with these. And I looked through again and I couldn't see the seal through my, through my lens. <laughs> and I looked up and it was like, I don't know what seals do, but they bark at you, right? I looked up. And I, you should have seen me run. I was running so fast away from the seal with the seal just running after me. And then a whole bus 
of, of tourists and the Kiwi experience <laughs> all laughed at me as I ran. And then I had to meet them in the, in the, um, in the hostel afterwards. I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> oh, actually, when I was in Thailand, I, had a, I was photographing this temple and a monkey jumped on my back, which was quite amusing. Yeah. Until the point where I then had to actually go to hospital and have a rabies jab because he also scratched me. <laughs> Did that he? was less funny. <laughs> yes, that's, that's less I think funny. that's all I can think of. Nice, moving okay. on. Okay, so our final question. What would you tell your younger self if you could go back and advise on their photographic journey, say, eight years ago? Yikes. Eight years ago. How old were you? <laughs> uh, 22. And I was 20. Okay. 20. Okay. What would I advise? Um, photograph everything. And also photograph different subjects. Because yeah. you, al you always learn something from something that you didn't either like doing yeah or it's very true i've learned so much from doing like events yeah exactly when, you, when you you're starting like. out and you're doing all the boring event stuff you actually learn yeah. techniques for photographing people yeah so photographing people or you know, i i started doing um school photography uh you know photographing kids yeah um, from from literally three years old until about 18 years old and i hated it Sounds you basically had to photograph <laughs> a child three different shots of a child in 30 seconds. Yeah. So I had to try and get a rapport with this child, yeah. of which I, I don't know any- You probably had the similar mental age though. Yeah. <laughs> that probably helped <laughs> that you helped, that. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I was photographing these children and you had to get a rapport with them in 30 seconds. And I think I've learned a lot about trying to communicate with your subject with your subject I mean that's just life skills as well really isn't it yeah I mean I didn't know any kids at that point because yeah, I had no, very no good one at socialising no <laughs> talking um, to people yeah um, whoa um, <clears throat> should we not have so, that when I was just freaked out as well as photograph everything try and get yourself in anywhere to photograph by blagging and offer to do it for free so if you want to, to when you're starting out if you want to learn how to do something yeah. or if you want to start actually being an event photographer or a travel, travel photographer or an accommodation photographer just blag your way in and offer to do work for free when i was in south america when i started you went out to five star hotels stuff, and stuff didn't yeah, you yeah i blagged my way into five star hotels offering them free images but i now have an accommodation portfolio yeah. of five star hotels yeah and yes, most of them didn't pay me, but you got I've now got it there and I got amazing experiences while I was there. But you have to know where to draw the line because there are so many people out there who say, can you yeah. do work for free? Can I use your image? And a credit is worthless. So I think that's all the questions. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, and I hope you've learned something uh, from our photo escapes and also about us. And if you do have any other questions, please do ask us. Yeah. We'll do this kind of thing again. Yeah and join us on Instagram and Facebook yep. and YouTube and Twitter.